Nope. What is up, Chicago Tough Sports fans? It is your friend, your very sick friend, Scott Terms, and I'm Hi, gutting friend. it out today. I'm gutting it out for you guys, for our 40 subscribers. Boop, Tony! Boop. Tony! What's up? How are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. You good? Couldn't be, couldn't be better. Yeah. Really? Wow, you sure? Very good. Good I'm man. positive. Good man. Yo, it's good been man. a while. Yeah, how are you? I'm good. Here's my question. What do we do on this platform again? What do we talk we, about? We're oh, talking dang. about yeah, stuffed animals today, right? Yeah. Sweet. All right. Yeah. We talk about pics. Today? Yeah. Ooh, oh, Girl look out. Yeah, I need one. There <laughs> you go. Today, 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 we're going to talk about the Chicago White Sox. White Sox. Boo. 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 I know, boo. I'm kind of in that boo category. I'm in that boo category right now. They got me feeling down, man. They do. Um, yeah. What are we? We're a little, a little over a week away from the opening day. They play Friday, right? Yeah, Friday in Detroit. Yep. If I'm not mistaken, right? So, all right, should I just start any comments before, or do you want me to just start let's, shooting let's away? With some of these no, just, let's do it. Get into it. All right, whoever wants to jump into it first, the first thing I got, and I think it's kind of obvious, other than right field and second base, yeah. Other than right field and second base, do you have any concern? Whoever wants to take it can start. Uh, assuming assuming that you have a problem with right field and second base. Uh, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of wondering what they're going to do with that fifth man in the rotation. Like, is Kopech coming up? Uh, what's like? What's the deal with that? I mean. They, ha they really haven't done much as far as signing free agents. They signed a Joe Kelly. Who cares? Um, but they really didn't get that number five guy, did they? Hell, they, they don't even have a number four guy at this point. <laughs> they're, they're, their number four guy is Dallas Keuchel. Yeah, that's, that, that, that makes me uneasy. That, that, that's the fourth guy within this rotation. And, and 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 actually the rotation is un, for me is a little bit uneasy. Um, I I still don't think that they have a true number one. They have a really 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 good number two, a really really good number three, and a, and a, and a guy in Dylan Cease who could be a really really good number two, yeah. but he hasn't really shown that he can be consistent. Yeah, that, and then you have Dallas. And then you have yeah. Dallas Keuchel. Yeah, I, I again, I'm I'm a Dylan Cease fan. I I totally agree with. He needs to work on that consistency when he's out there pitching. It's it's very frustrating watching Dylan Cease pitch, especially as an. Yeah. Player. Yeah, I I don't I don't need him to have 175 pitches through four innings. I'm being funny, but you know I, I don't need I don't need him to be at you know. 100 pitches through five, you know, stop trying to stop trying to strike people out. We know you have good stuff. Pitch to contact. Just get people out. Period. Just get people out. Learn, learn how to, what's the old saying? Learn how to pitch instead of, instead of throwing. Yeah. Is, that, is that the old saying? Something like that. Yeah. It is now. Right. <laughs> I, I just made it up. There you go. <laughs> Are, are they still disputing with uh, Lucas Giolito over two hundred thousand dollars or something like that? <laughs> I haven't heard any, I haven't heard anything coming to coming to terms of arbitration. That is so stupid. That I don't know. It's embarrassing. It's a horrible look, I man. It's a horrible look for anybody going to arbitration for the White Sox in the future. Now, it's just... well, it's I, it's interesting because the White Sox normally don't go to arbitration. Right, right, that's true. So something had to have happened to where all of a sudden, you know, you're disputing 
two hundred thousand dollars. That's ridiculous. It's it's two hundred thousand dollars. I know. <laughs> Which is a lot that, of money, but in baseball world, it's not a lot of money. They probably know? make that right. on beer sales in that park during a game. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. It, no, you're right, Scott. It's it's a very, very embarrassing look for that ball club. Like, like why why are you so hesitant on just giving him that money, paying him? He, he could be your good number one, but now if they were to, like, sign a certain right fielder that you've been – calling for Scott, then I, okay, that's what they want to do with the money, but they're not doing anything. It's not going to happen. Nope. Who did they yeah, sign from their, just, their minor leagues? Oh, no, dude, like, that's, if I can go into my little, like, my topic on this. Yeah. Like, my answer to this, like, like, we always wondered, you know, over the years, over the years, would the Sox actually go for it? And it's really, it's really upsetting to find out that they're blatantly not going for it. Yeah. You know, like they're, they have, they're, they're they, Rick Hahn made awesome trades, made awesome, you know, a couple signings with Luis Robert and finding Robert. But I mean, other than that, who have they signed so far? Be- Yasmani Grandal, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody in the division has made big marquee name signings. Like, like the Tigers signed guys like Javi Baez. They got the good manager in um, um, the guy from Houston. What's his name? Yeah, I, um, I forgot his name. What's his name? I, I can't remember. Anyway, yeah. I mean, look at Minnesota. Carlos Correa signing. You know. Yeah, that's. I your- mean, the Sox. The the Sox. Like it's just. It, I feel bad for Sox fans because it's just. This AJ team, Hinch. This team, AJ Hinch. Thank you. Thank you. This team, and then that that signing that they made, it's it's almost like it's a slap in the face. It's almost like it's done intentionally just to say fuck off to Sox fans. It really, it's an embarrassing signing. They they they're taking a guy who was a first round draft pick five years ago who never panned out. They don't know what they're doing in right field. Just look at the who have they had since Jermaine died. I I mean, they they, they were going to fix Nomar Mazzara, right? When they were first going for it in the COVID season, they were going to fix Nomar Mazzara. They were oh yeah, they're shoving him down our throats. He sucked. All three of us were better than Mazzara. We now and then then who they signed? Who was their other secret weapon last year? Was Adam Eaton. Adam Eaton. Adam Eaton. And now we just have to take, and now we just have to take it that that they Adam Andrew Vaughn and Gavin Sheets are the guy. They might be. I don't know. Nobody knows. That's the thing. They don't know. We don't know. don't know. I don't know. But you know who I do know is a consistent baseball player that can put you over the hump. Preach. There's no question about it. Preach. No, I'm just saying it doesn't make sense. The guy's not a. He's not making top dollar. He's not going to get top dollar. We found that out now. He's still a free agent, so he's still nobody's willing to pay him top dollar. They could overpay for whatever they think he's worth. The guy will hit you. I guarantee you, he hit you if he's healthy. Of course, it just it doesn't make sense. Of course, we're talking about Michael Conforto. It's just like I said. I feel really bad for White Sox fans. It's just it's clear now that they won't actually go for it. And now to like going forward, I feel like in order to get anything of, of value, we're gonna have to lose something of value, of course. And it's bad. You know, I don't know how far it's it, shitty. I know. It just it just sucks because we look at the team across town when they went for it, they went for it, they got who they wanted. They signed John Lester when the time came. They made moves for uh Ben Zobrist, you know, a perfect guy. They had needed. They had a hole at second base. They filled it with the best guy available, Ben Zobris. They had no hesitation about it. They went for it. Respect to the Cubs for that, because the White Sox. I'm sorry, they're just they're, they're playing little kids ball. The best way I can do it is is say that is that it's like putting together a thousand piece puzzle, and then by the end of it, you have like twenty pieces missing. You know, like it's cool. You still see the picture, but it kind of sucks because it's not complete. You know. Yep. And you can't complete it, so it's just and, 
and you know where to get the pieces to complete it, but you you refuse it to just, get the pieces. Right. It just it's frustrating, and I, and Rickon himself. I never. I, I made a point to never. I never. I always stood it up for Rickon. Yeah. But like this, and I know, I know, not you can't just snap your fingers and boom, everything goes your way. I understand that. I'm sure he tried. I'm sure he tried. I'm sure maybe he's getting pushback from Jerry or something. I don't know what it is. We just all assume that's what it is. But um, you have blatant holes on this team that's supposed to be a championship team, and the offense is the exact same from last year when you got embarrassed. By the Houston Astros, there's no difference in the lineup, unless you want to consider unless you want to consider Josh Harrison a difference. But I mean, that's just they have not improved. I mean, they their bullpen has improved. That's it. And like Hitman said, they they don't have a starter. They don't have a true number one. They don't have an ace. And who knows? Are we going to see is Ronaldo Lopez still around? Are we going to see? Is he the number five or six guy with, with Vance Velasquez or whatever his name is? So that's been a that's been right. a horrible four million dollar spent yep. right yeah, now. It's just uh, yeah. Go ahead. I'm um, sorry. I could go on. No, that, go on no, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. That's Look, I I, I I I'm in agreement with you, Scott. Um, it, it is a little bit um, concerning. Well, worse, I'm not, honestly, regarding um, this team, um, I don't necessarily – I'm not going to sit up here and blame Jerry Ryan. So if that's low-hanging fruit, you know, you know, going back to, you know, the whole Giolito thing, bitching and moaning, at, whether it's $200,000 or not, that just puts your franchise in a bad light and, 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 and it brings out the narrative that the White Sox are cheap. Very cheap. That Jer- that Jerry Weinsdorf is cheap, right? Yep. That's and 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 that's a bad look. But what I will say is, and we talked about this a little bit last year within our um, our final discussion after the after game four, right? At the game four of the uh, ALDS uh, of the yeah of the ALDS, okay. um, that how the White Sox needed to go out and capitalize and basically expand expand this core, expand their window a little bit. If they haven't done that, the their top free agent signing in terms of the field, in terms of everyday players, so to speak, is Lear Garcia. That's that's their that's their top everyday uh, free agent signing. Now I like what they've done with the bullpen. Getting Joe Kelly is awesome. Love it. The bullpen is is going to be rock solid. We hope. But they didn't address starting pitching. They didn't address second baseman, and it didn't address right field. Scott brought up a good point when I, a few weeks ago. Like they were, how much were they going to give Manny Machado? Like three hundred. But but you know the funny thing. We don't. We know the funny thing about the Machado deal, and this is why I, as a fan, am I'm upset. If you were willing to go and do options for Manny Machado, how come you're not willing to do options for some of these other players? Carlos Correa signed a three-year deal with the Twins, and there's two options after that. Mm. I'm sorry, there's options after year one. You can't do that. <laughs> You can't be crazy. See, see, this is why for me, I'm not even looking at Jerry anymore. This goes to Han. If if your if Jerry comes out and says, "Hey, this is the budget," it is up to you to work within the budget. If you can't work within the budget, then maybe you go to him and say, "Hey, I need a few extra more." Because I want to get this guy. If Jerry says no, but then that's when you have to rely on your your pro your pro scouting, right? To see who who's that second tier, like a Conforto, right? You're not gonna go get Bryant. You're not gonna go get you know Javi Baez. You're not gonna go get Correa. Fine, whatever. But you can still get Conforto. 
and 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 still be competitive and, and still and fill a hole, so to speak. That's my issue. They spent, I think, fifty million dollars on on their bullpen, but yet only spent I don't know ten million dollars, a little bit more than that, on regular on 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 outfield and second base. And yet, I'm supposed to, as a fan, be okay with that. Now, mm-hmm. they'll win a division. They'll win a division because they're good. But what's after that? Houston. How, how, instead of perfect, how, instead right. Of, instead of perfectly, too, because the reporting, why I've been so crazy about Conforto is that I, I know the stocks. The, I'm assuming they're relying on Yuliki Cespedes or Oscar Colas or something in the future. Yeah. Conforto was willing to sign a two or three year deal. That was reported. I don't know if it's true, but if that's the case, that would have been perfect. Sign him, see how he does. If he's a monster, you can extend him. If he's a monster and you want these guys instead, you can trade him. You know, it's just now they have none of those options. Well, and, and the thing with, the thing with that is, and you, their minor league, I, I checked today, their minor league system is the last in baseball. Right. They've done a Which horrible job. In, bring up, yeah. Sorry, they, they've I mean, done a horrible job. That's all right. They, they, they've done a horrible job in drafting. If you go through that every day, that every day starting nine, There's only one player who's been drafted that's contributed on a on a regular basis. And that's Tim Anderson. Okay. Aloy wasn't was a homegrown. No. Robert. He was traded from by, by the Cubs. Robert came from Cuba. That's not homegrown. Nope. Abreu came from Cuba. That's not homegrown. Grandal was a Grandal was a free agent signing. Makata came from Boston. Wasn't either, wasn't and and Makata came from Boston. Yeah, he was their biggest free agent signing so far, right? Grandal. Who, Grandal? Yeah. 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 Four, four position players. Absolutely. Yeah, right. Yeah. Now, to, to, to your point, Scott, about how the Cubs went out and signed Lester to ask for them, that, that, that big boy move, that was supposed to have been Keiko, Right. Keiko's not good, <laughs> and 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 they've totally mismanaged this offseason, right? I understand not wanting to pay Carlos Rodon twenty two million dollars a year. Right, I do too. I yeah, I get that. He's not consistent, but but okay, you sign him for a, a one year eighteen million net qualif- eighteen million dollar qualifying offer. And it looks like he got twenty-two million. Guess what? You get compensation for that. Yep. You get compensation. You get a second-round pick. All right. Okay. Then on top of that, you traded for Kimbrel. Okay, fine. Didn't work. Everyone knew that you were picking up that option just so you can trade them. Now you have to eat some money. You have to eat some money okay. in order for you to trade. I don't know if the White Sox want to eat want to eat nine of that eighteen million dollars or sixteen million dollars. A lot of money. That's what it's going to be because because they basically played their their hand too early with him. Right. You know, it sucks. I know you can't go back and look. Of course, it's easy to go back and nitpick everything. But uh, if they just stayed put without making that trade, they would have a guy like Cody Hoyer who is like, say, like a Joe Kelly type or a Kendall Graveman type. Not saying he was that good, but by this point in his career, he might have been, you know. You were bad. Yeah, I mean. Have, and they'd still have a second baseman. I know that's it's easy, like I said, to look back on that, but 
but yeah, just I don't know. It's it's yeah. Like I said, Hitman, I'm 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 excited for the season. I know they're gonna be good, but it's just it's just I want them to be that more I want them to be that much better. Well, you know, you you you, you, you want them to be like the Dodgers, you want them to be like the Padres who constantly will sit up here and go for it, right? Yeah. You know, you use their prospects to get the guys that they that they want, you know. And that's the problem. The White Sox don't have a great farm system. Yes, they got Colas, they got Cespedes, they got uh, Colson Montgomery, they got Eric Fernandez, they got these guys that they drafted over the past few years. But that's it. The White Sox, according to, I think it was, uh, I forget the website that I looked at, their top 10 prospects within their 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 minors, they don't have now one top tier prospect, according to that, that list. They have a bunch of twos and threes. And and basically a tier three prospect is someone who's 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 basically a French MLB player, basically a a four A 4A player. Oh, we oui, we. Oui. <laughs> so, I mean, the, everything goes back to, and they do and they, they do a really job in Cuba. I just wish they would apply everything they would do in Cuba. Here. Say here. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, if I'm here, what I'm going to do now, I wasn't going to. I had this down in my prediction portion of my uh, questions, but I guess that it ties in nicely to what you just said, Hitman. There's guys out there, say. How do I want to say this? Um, I think one of the top guys that they would have to trade, say, to get something decent that you were willing to trade and it won't crush you. I don't know if you guys agree with it. But I wrote down here, just off the top of my head, would you trade Andrew Vaughn for a third or fourth starter? A solid three, maybe a solid four. I, w- I At first I wrote two and three, but I thought that was an easy yes for a solid two. Would you trade Andrew Vaughn for a third or fourth starter? I don't have any examples. Maybe those guys from Oakland, you know, but I think they're a little for, higher tier than that. For for a third or a fourth? No. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I mean, if I'm going to dangle Andrew Vaughn out there, I, you better give me a a Lucas Giolito type. Yeah. Right. You know, someone who's, who's a, a really, really good number two, but not yet a one. For the direction that the Sox are going, I, I would need something better than a three. I would, I would need at least. Would a- you take? Would you take one of those pitchers from the from the A's, the either Montas or, um, what was his name? Manaya. Uh, Manaya. Yeah. I'll I'll take Manaya. I'll go Manaya too. Yeah. I'll take Manaya. Absolutely. Yeah. The other guy who? Oh, and then Frankie Montas, right? Yeah, former yeah. White Sox. He came over in the, in the Jeff Samarja right. trade. Yeah, right. No, I'll take Manaya. Ravon, yeah. And, and and the funny thing about the White Sox is that instead of going out and actually addressing the problem with you know getting a right fielder and stuff like that, they they shortchange it. They go, we're gonna make Andrew Vaughn a right fielder. We're gonna make Gavin Sheets a right fielder. Yeah. Right? You know, we got we got we got Garcia. He he can play everywhere. Hell, it's second base. They talk about playing Jake Berger at second base. Some can he do it? Yeah, probably. I don't know, maybe, but why not just spend the money or get somebody else? You know, here's my thing, too. And, and, and I'm going to bring back some, some really, really dark memories. When the White Sox signed Josh Harrison, I immediately thought of, of Jimmy Rollins. Yeah, yeah. God, yeah, I forgot they, basically I forgot they signed Jimmy Rollins. And and yeah, what I seen, Yeah, and, and what I'm and what I'm thinking that their that their hope is is that look, we know the White Sox last year was charmed, right? They they got they got they, they play in a bad division. They got lucky in some games. Pitching was dominant because at times they couldn't hit. Your me Mercedes had an unbelievable 
yeah. six weeks. But but now I they're ba they're banking on health, right? Mm -hmm. You know they're they're banking on Eloy uh, Eloy and and Robert staying healthy. If they stay healthy, great. But they both proven over the past couple of years that they kind of can't. Yeah. Yeah. They. Um, that's that's why I brought it up. I feel like deadline time. And like I said, maybe maybe I should have thought about it more that they put that much stock into Andrew Vaughn that they weren't going to go out for like because they want him to get at bats. And the only place for him to get at bats right now is like we talked about before, putting him at second base or putting him in right field. So obviously it's the right field thing. I mean, how confident are you guys in, say if Gavin Sheets is H and Andrew Vaughn is the right fielder, are you, I don't hate that, but I just, I like the possibilities of other things better. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. I agree. It, it's, if you were to ask me if I'd rather have Conforto and Wright and and I, I don't know another person at DH, yeah, but this is what they're, you know, going with. You know, it, it, they proved at times last year they can hit. You know, Gavin Sheets hit some moonshots, and uh, Vaughn had that one stretch where he was just just raking. But you know, I, I'd rather go with something proven. Yep. No, I agree. You you took the words right out of my mouth. I'd rather have a, a known outfielder, right fielder, everyday outfielder than, okay, are one of these guys going to work? Uh, I'd rather have a, a, a known than a gamble. But then again, it, it goes back to this, you know, it, it, is, is everybody, are, are the three main people in the middle of that lineup hitting? It's Robert hitting. It's Eloy hitting. Hell, I think this is a make or break season for Yohan Mankata, yeah. personally. I agree with that. Yeah, he's had, he's had a rough couple of seasons. I mean, you're, you're, you're two years removed from COVID. Yeah. Yep. Where's your power? Yeah, he, he is there be... anybody on the Sox? Go ahead, Tony. Finish oh, that. No, no, no. Go on. Oh, go on. Go on. No, no. I was just, it was the next part of my question. Who on the Sox is untradeable? Because if I never thought in a million years they would have traded somebody like Nick Madrigal. Now, that's another name that I thought of, Hitman. Yoan Moncada hasn't really lived up to the hype. Would they pull a shocker like that? Would they do something like that at the deadline if they needed to? It all depends on who they have. It all depends on who they, who they have playing third. Right. Do they want – you know, you want Garcia playing third every day? Is Berger going to be your third baseman after that trade? I mean, what's the? I mean, he's on a decent enough contract where you can you could trade him and get a decent enough haul, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, as far as untradeables, I, I think the only one. <laughs> I, 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 I unless you're getting, you know. A sh a stud shortstop. I think Tim Anderson is untradeable. Um, Roberts untradeable unless you're getting Trout <laughs> in return. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean it's. I mean they they have a couple of guys on this on this roster that's I I would presume that would be untradeable. It would break my heart if they trade him on kind of like that that would, that would sting me. I mean he's my favorite player, but. Last two seasons, he, he really hasn't done much. He hasn't lived up to the hype. But I feel, in my opinion, if they trade him, they need to get in return what they traded to get him. Did that make sense, what I said? Yeah. Yeah. At least we know what you're yeah. going for. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's – but but you know what the funny thing is? The funny thing regarding what you just said, Tony, is the reason why the White Sox minor league system – was top three to five for so for like three years straight. Yeah. Thanks, thanks to that that Adam Eaton trade and the Chris Sale trade. Yeah. That's where the minor league system was so was heavily ranked, highly ranked. Mm -hmm. And 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 
Eloy being down there, you know, for a little bit. And Robert, too. Okay. All right, we touched on Kopech a little bit. I'll throw a number at you. Because you know that – I don't know if they officially – have they come out and said anything about a limit for him? No, I mean, he he's supposed to be pitching two innings tomorrow, I think. Yeah, I, I don't know about uh, innings – they're going to have a limit on them. I would almost, I would bet money on it that they would. Um, do you keep them healthy for the playoffs? Do you keep them? Is that the main thing? Now we don't know how he's going to be as a starter too. That's another question mark with this team, you know? So it's like, I mean, do you baby Kopech? Do you let him go? Do you, yeah. What do, what do you guys think? I, I think at first you let him go. Just to see if he's still a starter, see if he still has that that power that he had when he first started. Um, but yeah, in the beginning, you you let him go if it's not working out. I mean, this is where it comes into where the Sox haven't addressed their their starting five. I mean, it's it's kind of a hard a hard uh, question to answer, you know. But now, yeah. Um... You have, I don't, to, I, you have to find a way to keep him healthy for the playoffs. Obviously, you have to do that. I, I would say that um, you, you probably will have to just let him go. Um, maybe you start off with, you know, a pitch count, you know, for these first few starts and say, hey, you know, we're going to let you go five innings and, or 85 to 90 pitches, Right. Wherever which one comes first, and then try to build him up. Because I mean, honestly, I mean, he he should have been built up, and and because he was hurt last got hurt last year, they weren't able to um, push him a little bit more like they wanted to. Yeah. And in the off season, apparently he had COVID, so he wasn't able to do much during the lockout or anything like that. So he wasn't able to to push himself in. So, yeah, I, I there's a part of me that wants to let him go, but there's another part and be like, all right, he's an asset. What if he gets you hurt? might have to baby, you, you, you might, you might have to baby him a little bit. Yeah. I mean, that's part of the reason why they, they, they brought back Ronaldo. That's part of the reason why they signed Velasquez. I mean, hell, they, at, one, at some point, they might go with seven starters. Yeah. Well, another starting question. How short is the leash for you guys? How short is the leash on Keiko? Very give him a chance. Short. Give, him, give him a chance because he deserves it. I mean, he's a veteran. Yeah. Maybe last year. Yeah, I mean, maybe you figured something out. But, I mean, if he starts off the season – you know, every five starts and he's one and four, or zero oh, and no. four with a seven ERA. You know, no, I wouldn't even let it get that far. Very, well, what do very, you do with him? The most e- is he then? The, is he then the most expensive long reliever in baseball? No, you eat the money. Yeah. You DFA him. Will they do that you, though? You, you're going to have no choice but to. I agree. No, I agree. Yeah, I it just it, it's it's scary to think about it. What's his contract? I know Hitman, you're you're real good at knowing contracts. Well, he he's got. I think he's he's like eighteen million. But I'm gonna be honest with you. If he starts to be really bad, th- there is a vested option in there where he he can make up to twenty something million dollars next year. That automatically kicks in if he reaches certain innings limits. So if he's bad, I, I can I can see them Ooh. get trying to get out of that. Absolutely. Yeah, you have well, to. Well, that actually, yeah. I, I honestly, I honestly didn't know that. So that actually makes me feel better. Yeah. You know, that kind of more incentive for them to actually DFA him. Yeah, I actually like that. Okay. You know, I, I, I could mean, be wrong, nothing, but there's nothing. There's nothing to believe that he's going to come out dominating the league. You know. No. Right. Right. I mean, and he, he pitched well Sunday. In, in, in spring training, he pitched pretty well. Yeah, right. But as far as far as I understand, for everything that I read, and once again, I could be wrong, but he has that vested option next year that goes over twenty million if he reaches a certain amount of innings, 
And if he's bad to start out, at, you know, just like you said, if he's one and four with a seven ERA, guess what? DFA did. Yeah. Very, very short leash. Are you guys a little more confident or are you still more concerned about Tony La Russa as the manager? I don't care. <laughs> I'm over that. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is what it is at this point. He's here. You know, I, I hope right. he's a little bit better than what he was last year. Yeah. You know, we'll kind of go from there. Yeah. Do you believe Tim Anderson with all the praise he gives him? Or is it just something that he can – come on, Tim, say this to the public. Come on. No, I, I, I think there's some, some genuine – with Tim yeah. Anderson with that. I don't think there's a fakeness within, within Anderson. I, I think I think they hit it off, and, and they take their cues from from him and Abreu. So, if, yeah, if Tim I mean, Anderson said it's, it's okay, of, yeah, I don't mean to sing a lot of Anderson. It's just he was asked about it, and he said what he said about it. Yeah, like I said, all last year it seemed like the players liked him. So I mean, but I'm not. I mean, I guess that means something, right? I mean, if they're happy with the manager, but. Uh, yeah, Tony, how do you feel? Do you have any <laughs> you care at all? Not really. I mean, as long as they're winning, if they're winning games, then he's doing right. something right, I guess. Yeah, I mean, if, if they start out, if they, if they're, you know, if they come out and they suck and he's, 10 and 20. It, and he's not doing anything to make any changes or make the team better, then of course I'm going to be like, the hell with this guy. But as of right now, I really, it doesn't really phase me. Does anybody scare you guys in the division? Is anybody going to compete with the White Sox this year? Legitimately compete? Uh, I'm a little worried about Minnesota's hitting. Like, that's where the Sox negligence to address their, their starting rotation will bother me. Because Minnesota's offense is kind of, I don't want to say stacked, but they're good. I'm not worried about Minnesota's pitching at all. Yeah, I think you sent out that text, right, about their starting rotation. Yeah. It's like Robbie yeah, Dobnik. Kind of... um, I think they signed Sonny Gray. Sonny Gray's like yeah. off and on. I mean, he'll have like a really good way I... game, and then he has like three bad ones. The way I look at the Correa signing is that it's a good signing, obviously. Yeah. But then they also don't have Josh Donaldson or Nelson Cruz anymore. So, I mean, that kind of just like – it's like replacing whatever production that those two, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's not as scary. If it, if Correa was in the lineup with Donaldson and Nelson Cruz. Right. Who really, be like, who oh, really scares me. The one who really scares me on that, that offense is Buxton. I remember. Well, he's, yeah. The thing with him is he, he, if he stays healthy, that dude's a, a five tool player, man. That that dude's a stud if he can stay healthy. But he just never ever been able to stay healthy. Yeah. They, 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 I think they they gave him a long term deal too, if I'm not mistaken. The very first time I saw Byron Buxton play he, here at the Sox field, he caught. I, I don't know who hit the shot to center field, but he caught it over his shoulder and he just smacked right into the center field wall. I just remember he he laid out, but it was an amazing catch. But that's the thing. If he, if Byron Buxton stays healthy, Sox pitching is in trouble. I, I think he's going to be the best hitter on that squad. Yeah, I mean, I think Minnesota's probably the most dangerous threat. I know Detroit's coming. I know Detroit. I know their their farm system's pretty stacked. Yeah. Yeah. I think they have two pitchers. I think they have two pitchers, right? I think that's where they're really relying on I forgot their names. I don't know their names. Oh, but you kind of broke up there a little bit. For, no for Detroit. I think they have starting oh. pitching in their the, minors. Yeah, are, they have um uh oh in their minors. I, I know they have that yeah. kid Casey Mays or Mize. He's pretty good. Yeah, right. Yeah they have another pitcher. I can't I can't recall his name right now. And then over in now, with the Indians of course you got Shane Bieber and uh, the who? <laughs> the Beebs. The who? The Beebs. <laughs> They're not the Indians anymore. They're oh, yeah, right. I'm sorry. The Guardians. I They're the Guardians. 
I'm not racist. Jesus. They're the Guardians. Jeez. There's Indians right now. Yeah, right? There's actual Indians right now freaking out. <laughs> They're tearing the feathers out of their head. Right. All right. Um, yeah, I know. I, I mean, you know, I was just going to say that. No, I was just going to say that. Look, I mean, it's, it's, um, I, I'm always concerned about the Royals because the White Sox, for some reason, struggles against the Royals. Because that's, that's what happens Bobby, every single year. Um, Whit Jr. You know, with Mer- Merrifield and, you know, but, you know, the, the White Sox should win that division. They'll, they'll win their 90 games. Yeah. You know, but the question, you know, will boil down to is what happens in, you know, in the, in the playoffs? Yep. Do they have enough starting pitching? Can they hit? Would you trade Andrew Vaughn for Whit Merrifield? Yes, I would. I, I I've always wanted Whit Merrifield. Over here. I know yeah. every year they talk about Kansas City's trying to move Whit, but they never move him. But I I, I would trade Andrew Vaughn for Whit Merrifield because I know he can play outfield too. He's up there though, isn't he? He's like thirty-one, isn't he? He's I know he's not good. a young yeah. player. He's still good. No, I know. Hey, if it I means if just it fun means to getting a ring, if it means I'm getting a ring and winning the series. See you later, Andrew. Yeah, but yeah, but does Whit Merrifield put you over the over the hump though? No. <laughs> not really. No. I mean, you're gonna have to trade Vaughn for somebody that's gonna get you over the hump. Yeah. But I think the problem, and okay. I go back to what I said before. I, I the White Sox don't have the farm system right now to yeah, to make these trades yeah. because that's what I'm saying. come 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 trade deadline time that's what scares me like last year who's it gonna be well, who's gonna be the Nick Madrigal well yeah I mean and that, I think plus the fact that you know they're, they're gonna be bargain hunting again Cesar Hernandez was a bargain hunting. The only reason why they they uh, Ryan Capera was I mean he was good but that's bargain hunting I mean that's good trade and they didn't give up much for him but you know Kimbrel was the top closer on the market they went and got him but they traded their their starting second baseman for him Kimbrel left all his stuff with the Cubs he didn't bring it over here so I mean that that's where we're at right now. We lose Scott. We should be more excited, though. We should. Oh, sorry. I'm. No, no. I'm. Look, I'm like oh, you, Scotty. Team. I'm. Yeah. I'm. The White Sox are going to be good, but the question. Oh, well, yeah, but huh, this team could, could be so much better. Yeah. You know, you, you know, you're wasting away. You know, Tim Anderson's prime years, and you know, Eloy's and 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 Roberts, and you know. And you got one more – well, this is a Braves free agent year. Mm. You know? Well, I know. Hopefully yeah, – Ron Dahl's not getting any younger. Yeah, right. Well, that's another thing. What are they going to do? What, he's in year – what is this? Three? three? Yeah. <laughs> three out of four, right? Yeah, I mean – what are they going to do with catcher? Do they resign him? He's old, isn't he? Yeah, those those yeah. knees have got. He's got to start feeling something in those knees by now. Well, and that's the thing too. That that's why backup catcher wasn't was important too. Yeah, because yeah. there's going to be days where Grandal is going to have to DH. Scott's favorite, Zach Collins. Oh God, he's so bad. Oh. He's good. On you know, the they, show. I'm playing the show. He's got like 30 home runs right now. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, he's good for me too. Yeah, you know that that they haven't done anything to address backup catcher. So, I mean, just like you said, I didn't realize he shouldn't even bring a bat with him. Honestly, just go up there and pretend you have a bat, and that's what he does. Probably hit better that way, right? (laughs) So here, here, for those of you that will be watching this show, 
All right. All of our four, all forty of you. It's not like we are depressed because we think the White Sox are going to be bad. We think the White Sox are going to, are going to win a division. We think they're going to be good. All we're saying is, is that they could be so much better. I do have that vibe from this video. Like we're talking about a shitty baseball team. I know it's because I'm sick and I don't feel good and I just want to go to bed. But it's like, no. yeah, I feel like yeah, this video is depressing. You know, it's it's look, it's 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 being realistic. It's being realistic, honestly. Right. You know, it's no, it's, it's, it's the it's like that it's like that meme with the stick figure. He's poking. He's like, do something. You know, it's like it's something playing there, and he's poking it with the goddamn stick. He's like, "Come on, do something!" And they're not doing anything. A few years ago, you were willing to pay Manny Machado. You were willing to pay Bryce Harper. Uh, was there anyone else? I don't think so. Those were the big names. But now, now you have good players that would have cost you way less, and you're not doing anything. You didn't do anything. It, they were going to pay Zach Wheeler a shitload of money too. Yeah, Zach Wheeler. Yeah, but that that his his wife wanted him to go to New York, and that money got right. spent on Keiko. Yeah. And 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 the, and the Keiko signing, I mean, I'm I'm just going to speak for myself. I liked I liked it, but right. he just he just I I don't know what happened from because he was really good in 2020. He was really good in 2020. There were questions, though. I still remember, like, when they signed him. Like, yeah, we have Keiko, but remember, he's not the Cy Young Award winner that he was. You know, because he had a couple of years after the Cy Young that aren't that good. They're not horrible, but they weren't that good either, you know? Right. And then he really, yeah, the COVID season, he was, yeah, he was, what, shit, he was really good. He yeah, was almost, he was, he I was think he was. dominant that season. Yeah, yeah, until, yeah, he, he, he I think, was third in the, in the, Major League Baseball at ERA, his ERA was under two. And then, who, who, what? Then what happened? That soft tossing shit, man. It doesn't play anymore. No. <laughs> well, you better have some movement. Man. <laughs> oh, here's my question for you guys. Speaking of talk, soft tossing. Can Mark, can, can Mark Burley survive today's ba- baseball? Hmm. Yeah, I think he could. I don't know if I, I – yeah, I don't know who's better. I don't know who's being the Keiko. Hold on. Where's my beautiful face? I'm coming. That's what you said. My nose keeps running, so every time I fucking want to wipe my nose, I, I figure the people don't want to see me picking my nose. Um – who do you think's better all time, Burley or Keiko? Burley. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, I would, I would think Burley. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he'd be like an ace, but I mean, yeah, I think he could do it. He was smart enough. He was good enough. Yeah, I mean, that's a guy. Yeah, you, you, you didn't appreciate him when he was here, you know, like you did, right. but you, you, like, took for, you took him for granted. Right. So, so we're all in agreement that the White Sox still have questions at right field, second base, um, and their fourth and fifth starters, along with backup catcher. Right? Yep. We're saying all that they'll still win a division by ten games. Yeah. And I'm calling for a Dylan Cease breakout season. I think it's time for him to for Dylan Cease. I think he's going to have he's going to have a good year this year. I feel it. I, I, think, I hope so. I, I think he's at the point where he needs to have a good season this year. Now. He, it, it's time. It's time. I think if he doesn't have a good season to start off with, maybe the Sox should make consider some decisions with him. No, he's got – he'll figure it out. I, I, I just think his stuff's so good that you got to just – I'd it's, say just roll with him. It's good. Yeah. yeah. He, he needs to figure out his consistency. That's what he needs to do. Right, right. So, like Hitman said, just quit trying to pinpoint every pitch and just they're gonna hit your they're gonna hit. So I mean yeah. just let up, yeah, let your let your defense do their thing. Well that's what that's why Burley was so good. He wasn't trying to right. strike everybody out, pitch to contact. There's only a handful of pitchers in major league baseball where they go out there to strike people out. 
You know, I mean, and Dylan Cease isn't one of them. But he should be. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They all should be, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I just think if he would attack the zone more, I think his stuff would play better. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. We'll see. I hope I'm right. I mean, you, we, we saw a few times last gonna, year. Yeah, you guys take over. You guys, if you got stuff to bring up, go for it. No, I, I was just going to say that, you know, you know, he, he proved, you know, at times last year, especially when he can get that change up over that, 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 or that, yeah, that change up over that where he was, he was really dominant and just a matter of him being consistent. I'm I'm still confident in uh, Ethan uh, to get the uh, cats. Yeah, to get Ethan cats. cats. To get uh, wow, my words got jumbled. What am I trying to say? <laughs> I'm still confident in Ethan Cats to get Dylan Cease on the right path that he needs to be on. Baseball fun, baseball good. Yeah, you know what you're <laughs> <Go> sports. <laughs> EA sports team. Uh, with your with your basket hoops. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Here it is. This is that moment. There's always that fucking yes. moment with us. I love that it. Awkward silence. Yeah. Do it on always. purpose. <laughs> I have nothing well, that's all I get. Yeah. That's all I get. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, predictions. I mean, do we have any predictions on who we think is going to win the World Series this year? Dodgers. It was yeah. A joke. I, I honestly I don't know. I mean I mean the Braves came out of nowhere last year, didn't they? Yeah. I I am gonna go with my picks again. Sox and Braves. I'm gonna go with Sox and Braves this year. So I, I'm just I'm, um, saying, I'm saying Braves because I like Acuna Jr. And I, I, I was kind of salty that the Braves won and he was injured, but if it's Sox and Braves, obviously I'm going with Sox. So. I'll go Dodgers. Dodgers. Uh, Dodgers. Yankees. Why the hell not? Ooh. MLB would love that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go. Um. Dodgers, Blue Jays, with the Blue Jays winning the World Series. Interesting. Good pick, yeah. Yeah, they made a lot of pitching moves this year. That's what they was missing. They could hit the ball. Did they keep uh, Barrios? Is he still over there? No, I thought he got traded. No, I, oh, no, no, no. Minnesota traded him to Toronto. Later. I think he's still there. I think he's still there. Yeah. Yeah, if he's there still, you might be right. You might be right. <laughs> that's that. That's my team right now. The, you know, that's the team that will represent the American League in the World Series and possibly win it all. You, you know why? Because they make the moves that they need to make. And 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 Vlagarro Jr. will be your uh, oh, God. American League MVP. He's on a different level. That's that dude. How dare you disrespect <laughs> Luis Robert? <laughs> MVP this year. MVP. So, so no, that's, yeah. That's all I got, dude. That's all I got. Good. Good night. Yes. Oh, yeah. I got to say this. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want more entertaining and excitement yeah. that we brought to you tonight. Yes. Um, when's the next show? Or are we, you guys are doing a wrestling show? Yes. WrestleMania preview. Yeah. We're doing a WrestleMania, yep, WrestleMania preview. Where, where I will actually, where I, I will actually take. Card. Can I, hey, what? that night two card sucks. Shut up. Balls. Oh my God. I looked at that today. That is horrible. It might be entertaining, but oh my God. Well, that that's the thing that I was talking with Tony earlier that I, I have some concerns about, you know, this card and, and, and trying to, and my concerns with them pushing this to two nights. I'm concerned with one match and one match only. That is it. Two nights. 
I'm gonna watch both oh, nights God. and every match just because I like wrestling, but uh, I'm pretty pumped for that night two main event. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. I'm, I'm still going with them. Whatever. I mean, nobody can be perfect, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more excited for, like, is that true that they're like, why would they? I don't know. I, I don't know how to book a wrestling show, but like, they have two non wrestlers competing in singles matches on the same night in Pat McAfee and Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that one, but they, they yeah, should have split like that up. Two of yours. Yeah, I love Johnny Knoxville just like I love Johnny Knoxville. I do, but I don't want to. I don't want to watch him wrestle. I want to see him, you know, kill himself on jacket. Well, that's what that that's what will happen. That Pat McAfee match might actually be pretty good, Scott. Who is he? Come on. Austin, Austin Theory. Austin Theory. Oh. Austin Theory. I'm not gonna say I'm not saying it's gonna be out of this world great, but I'm not saying it's gonna be a bad match. I think no, it's gonna, it's gonna be, be a bad. horrible match. It's just gonna be entertaining. You mean? If one of the if fifty if fifty percent of the people don't know how to wrestle, I don't think it would be a good match. Uh, so we'll have to see. Hey guys, we we'll have to wait. Yeah. You guys and your wrestling and your wrestling men. <laughs> yeah, sports, no sports entertainment. Yeah, I am a sports entertainer. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not a pro wrestler. wrestler. I am a. I I love that sports entertainment. We're, that pro wrestling stuff is garbage. Sports entertain, entertainers that beat up pro wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> That's and Cody Rhodes. Thing. That one seg that one segment, what I thought was good, and I don't like Seth Rollins. The current Seth Rollins, but I thought that was entertaining. The thing he did with Vince, yeah, did that you guys was, see that? Yeah, that was, yeah. I thought that was yeah. funny. Yeah, I like, thought that was funny. Get your feet off my table. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he did you yeah, did you was, see what he was using? The pen to write it. A pencil. Power, Vince McMahon. Yeah, power of the power of the pen. Power of the pencil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the most powerful it's thing be, in, in in sports entertainment. That's going to be Cody, right? That Probably. Stuff. That's that's look. It, it could be a couple things. I it, you know it could be Cody. Hell, it could be the Undertaker. Yeah. Mm. I know who it's not it going be to be. Owen Hart. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Scott Hall. Oh boy, too soon. Rest in peace. Yeah, all right. What? But no. Who's it not going to be? Wait, what were you going to say? Finish your damn sentence. Who it's not going to be? Yeah. Who am I always bitching about? Oh, yeah, that's right. What the? Where is he? What was all these videos he's making? I don't know. I don't know. I'm so over it. I don't even wear the fucking shirt anymore. I don't. He'll show up at AEW in, in the next seven years. God. <laughs> and, and, and then and then you'll lose your mind. You're like, oh my god, it's the greatest thing ever. Yeah, I'll be Se- seven years I'll be, later. I'll be forty eight years old or some shit and <laughs> bad as hell and pull my back and Amy will have to roll me around the house. <laughs> and then and then you'll be you'll be humming Bray Wyatt's music. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. So but no wrestling wrong with your laner. Yeah. WrestleMania preview tomorrow. Yep. And, I and then I, you, I, I do I have to? No, you. If you want to jump in, the more the merrier. No. Yeah, I mean, I, I just have some thoughts on um, the card itself, and and what Tony's buddy said about the Rock not being able to wrestle or knowing two moves. I I I have some cogent thoughts about that. You should officially call him out tomorrow on the show. Yep. Tony's co-worker. Yeah. Oh, why not? That could be a match at WrestleMania. It's, you know, <laughs> me, me, that can make the me, that, that can make night two. That can make the card on night two. That would be better than the, the four-way women's tag team title match. 
<laughs> Terrible. So. All right, I got nothing else. Scott's nose is dripping. I know, it won't stop. Oh, my God. <laughs> Subscribe right. to our channel. Yes. Help us out. Tell your peeps. Yes. Go socks. <laughs>